Welcome back to Tibetan Alphabet class. Uh, during the last uh, three classes, we've covered half the 30 consonants in the Tibetan alphabet, half of the Tibetan alphabet we've done by learning the Kacha Tabatsa tricks. So please say Kacha Tabatsa, Kacha Tabatsa, Kacha Tabatsa, Kacha Tabatsa. So we finished uh, half, of, half of the 30 consonants by finishing three columns which all have the same sound, because it moves up the throat, guttural, palatal, dental, labial, and then some kind of teeth thing going on with sa. So we, we finished that pattern and it holds. Uh, we have gutturals, palatals, dentals, labials, and teethy things. And then we have high tone, unaspirated, high tone, aspirated, then low tone, aspirated. The first column existing in English or not? No. Does not, okay? Give me a cup of tea and I'll give you a pen. We don't have, okay? Second column existing in English or not? Yes. All, mostly English consonants are correspond to the second column in Tibetan. Third column do we have in English outside of Brazilian English? No, okay. Now we're going to do the fourth column, which hangs together also pretty much. And it's a very beautiful uh, way that it hangs together. So we're over to fourth column now. And this is the nasal. Nasal means any kind of sound that is an N sound or an M sound or an N sound. These are all called nasals because they kind of sound like you have a stuffed up nose, okay? So they're called nasals. It's the first, and they correspond to the area of the mouth or throat where contact is made between the tongue and the throat or the mouth. So the first one's going to be a guttural uh, closure of the throat. So here is, please say, please say ring. ring. Okay, like Lord of the Rings, ring. ring. Then say ring a bell. Ring say it fast, ring a bell. Ring a bell. Ring a bell. Take the R off. Ing a bell. Ing a bell. Ing a bell. Take the I off. Ng a bell. Ng a bell. Ng a bell. So a lot of people have trouble with this one because it doesn't exist in English as an initial consonant. It's very popular in Vietnamese as an initial consonant, but we don't have it in English. So you have to trick your mouth into saying it. It's like red light, red light, red light, green light. You know what I mean? You have to trick your mouth. So say ring a bell. Ring a bell, 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 Great. Most people try to get a tongue in there on the top of the mouth and they get confused. No, no, no. You can do this if you do this sound properly. You should be able to do it with your hand holding your tongue down. No, no, It's a closure of the throat here. Okay, no, no, bell, no. Okay, nga. Nah. Got it? Very few foreigners can do this sound correctly at the beginning. You guys are doing really well. I remember I struggled with it for quite a while. Nga. Nah. Nga. Nah. The tongue is not making contact with the mouth. Nga. Nah. It's a closure of the throat here. Nga. Nah. Okay, nga. Nah. So that's a guttural that comes from the throat. So if we go across, which happens to be alphabetical order, which we'll talk about in a later video, it's say ka. 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 Ka, na, ka, 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 na, and I will say at the beginning that the nasal column is low tone, and if you make it high tone, you change the meaning. Okay, na means a, na means five, it can mean before, or it can mean a drum. Na means me. Okay, this is na. Say na. So you cannot say na. Then you change the meaning. If you're careful about the vowel quality, you can catch yourself. R is the vowel quality of the lower tone. Nga. Uh is the vowel quality of the higher tone. Nga. Okay? Nga means five, before, or drum. Uh, nga means me. So, but a lot of foreigners will say nga, and they, then meaning me, and they don't know what you're talking about. Okay? So please say ka. 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 Nga. 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 Okay, be careful to say it low tone. I want you to contrast low tone and high tone. Nga. 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 
Okay, very important. Chinese has four tones, I mean, at least in Mandarin. So it'd be like, uh, wu, 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 wu. Okay, and you, if you don't get it right, you'd have no idea what you're talking about. So, na. Okay, now uh, the palatal row, row, which is being made by contact with the tongue with the top of the mouth. Cha. 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 And then the palatal nasal is nya. nya. Low tone, nya. 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 Cha. 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 And then from the same contact area, nya. nya. Like senor. Or, you know, we have Kenyan, Kenyan or senor, like that. We have the N with a tilde over it. Okay, so uh, nya. If it's low tone, it means fish. If it's high tone, I can't think of any. It can mean ears to do with your ears or listening, yin, or like that. Okay, okay. Now we're gonna need a dental nasal. Say say ta, 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 ta. 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 Then what? Give me the nasal from the. What's the nasal from behind your teeth? Na. Na. See the contact's being made right behind your teeth. So it's not technically a dental, but it's we call it a dental. Say ta. 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 ta na. na. Okay. Ta. 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 ta, ta na. na. Let's go down the nasal column so far. Na. Na. Nya. Nya. Na. Na. What's the labial? What's the nasal sound that comes from your lips? Ma, ma, okay, say pa, 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 pa. ma, okay. Ma means mother or not. Ma means a wound uh, or to speak. So y it obviously you have to be careful about tones on your nasals, okay? So saying pa, 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 pa ma, ma, okay? Let's go down the nasal column, na. Nya. Nya. Na. Na. Ma. Ma. Okay? That's all the nasals. Unfortunately, the fifth one is not a nasal. Okay? But we have to fill it in just for completeness. Wa. 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 Okay? Uh, na. 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 Nya. Nya. Na. Na. Ma. Ma. Wa. Wa. Okay, and it's just a low tone wa. Okay. Wa is the rarest letter in Tibetan. It only appears in like two or three words. Uh, it means fox. Uh, you don't, you almost never see it, but because there's such a now an interchange between Tibetan and Chinese, and Chinese has so many wa's that you'll see a lot like hua shang, or you'll see uh, lots of words with pi wang is a uh, guitar for example. Uh, so you, you'll hear that kind of, you'll hear a few wahs, but it's rare and people don't even know how to draw it. Most people don't know how to draw it, so it's wah. Okay. So now we have, uh, we finished 20 of the 30 Tibetan consonants. We've seen a pattern of guttural, palatal, dental, labial, and then teethy thing here. And we've seen the pattern of high tone unaspirated, high tone aspirated, Low tone aspirated, low tone nasal, low tone nasal, except for this last letter. Okay. Those of you who are interested in studying Sanskrit later, there are uh, floating nasals in Sanskrit. So you, there are usually a dot above the letter, like Om has a dot, right? And uh, those are those are lab those so those are nasals which are dependent upon the next letter to come. So sangha, would the, the letter is a dot in the Sanskrit alphabet, but you're supposed to say nga if the next letter is ga, so sangha, okay? Then if the next letter is like uh, cha, like five is pancha, like, and then you'd have to say nya. The, the sound, the nasal before, the floating nasal before a cha would be the palatal one, which is pan, pancha, pancha, okay? Then uh, this would be a dental. You would say pandita, or something like that. Panta, or santana, santana, a mental, co 
mental stream, you see? So, and very, very few people understand that, very, very few, and they just write the wrong thing. Like samsara, the floating nasal for S is N, sansara, it, it's always sansara. Uh, chaka sanvara, not samvara. There's no such thing in Sanskrit. So people just don't understand the... But the, if you understand the nasal column, your Sanskrit gets better because you know what the n correct nasal would be before the next letter. If it's sambara, it's, if it's a B sound, it has to be M. If it's a D sound, it has to be N. If it's a palatal sound, it has to be Nya. If it's a guttural, it has to be Nga. Okay? And people, they just don't get it uh, ever. Some people never get it. So when you're learning Sanskrit, you can pull your nasals from the nasal, nasal column for the c corresponding row that you're in. Okay? All right, we finished uh, 20 of the Tibetan letters of the consonants, and we have 10 more to go uh, in the last two and a half rows. So we'll be doing that in the next exciting installment of Tibetan Alphabet.